All right, what's up, y'all? This is Mike with M10 Stuff. I'm going to show you how I'm going to take this little teeny closet here, and we're going to turn it into a huge closet, adding 180 square feet of closet space and closet organization. We're going to remove all this insulation. We're going to move the wall. We're going to move the door. We're going to remove the trusses. We're going to move the ducting. We're going to move the water lines, and I'm going to show you every step of the entire process and how we finished it off to come up with this. This closet is sweet and I love it. And it's got tons of closet organization, tons of open space, all with the help of the closet doctor. I've got a master closet that we love now. Just keep watching, I'll show you the entire process. We are sucking the insulation out of the attic, rented an insulation vacuum. And it's gonna take a while, I don't know how long, Take a little while, but just got the last little bit out of here. We're all cleaned up and uh, ready to start uh, the next step. Just finished up the floor joists. So they are all in all the way to the other wall. And we've got a few of the rafters in as well. And some of the trusses already cut out. As you can see, so I've got about four or five more of the rafters to put in. Then I can take out the rest of these trusses and uh, insulate the floor and then start putting in subfloor. I decided on the ducting that went to the front room downstairs. I removed it from here and I moved it to the other side of the room. That way, I don't have to worry about this ducting coming either through the ceiling or through the floor, and it will allow me to insulate this floor a little bit better for sound. And it's still, the air flows the exact same downstairs. Also, now that all the floor joists are in, I've uh, ran all my wires back through. And what I did to make things a little bit easier is those come from over here and everything meets over here so what i did is i just cut the wires here at the wall where they come in and i'm going to put a j box in here and then reconnect all the wires in the j box getting ready to open up this uh, opening a little bit more and figure out where i'm going to put the uh, low voltage box here but um, we've got all but one rafter in with the two by eights. And we got this last one to remove after we get it in. I have to notch it out because over on this side, I'm gonna have to notch it out for these two by fours that run, there's four of them that run along this side. So I have to notch the two by eight for those, get that in place, get one more over here, uh, strictly just for the drywall to attach to and then uh, we'll be able to insulate the floor. Actually, I'm gonna run a little bit of wiring to put, I'm gonna put an outlet on each wall and then, so I'll run the wiring through the floor and then we'll insulate the floor and put our subfloor in. I did pick up a window today. Uh, I got this at Contractors Warehouse and they call it the Easy Fin or the Easy Trim window. So it's actually just gonna slide into the hole from the outside and um, be glued into place. So we'll have a little bit of light and airflow in here to replace the gable vent that's there. Getting ready to blow in the cellulose insulation uh, just under the floor. The reason I chose cellulose is because it's better for sound um, proofing. And so because that closet's right above here, I wanted to be a little bit more soundproofing for the living room area. And uh, it's quite a bit cheaper as well and bought 10 bags. So the rental of the machine is free as well for 24 hours. So we'll get that going here in a second. So I've sprayed the uh, fiberglass stuff multiple times. This stuff is far dustier and far messier. I know it's rated better for sound and the R value is a little bit better at the seven and a half inches of thickness that I'm trying to go for. 
but I don't know if it's worth it. All right, we are fully insulated. Seven and a half inches of cellulose sanctuary brand. Good for fire and sound. And it was only about 75 bucks and free rental of the machine. But very dusty, very dirty. Got uh, two pieces of subfloor in. The sound acoustics in here are much better with that insulation now. And uh, so I'm gonna have to uh, prepare to do the water splicing, get those running up the inside of this wall here and then 90 and over to where they will connect. And, uh, but it's 11 o'clock at night now. So going to bed. All the sub floors in. What I did on this wall, cause it was uh, very thin, is I put in another two by four. I sistered it in uh, going this direction so that it gave me a two by six equivalent wall. So, cause they've got the one two by four here and it was only sticking out about an inch. So I added another two by four and uh, nailed that in up here. That way my walls are a little bit thicker. So I got uh, 24 inch wide insulation. It's R19 for two by six walls and I'll get them sealed up on the ends a little bit better than it is now and then get the drywall up on there. Here's our current progress now. I got this uh, wall opened up. I moved the wiring box over to here and I got the subfloor all in. We took out all the trusses and put in um, ceiling rafters, two by eights, floor joists, two by eights, uh, insulated it for sound. I just put insulation up on this front wall because it's you could hear everything in front of the house coming through there. I was getting tired of it. Plus, it was a lot colder. And uh, today, I got some couple sheets of drywall up. Got more to go. Obviously, still have to move the water lines. Um, but today, I ran the electrical. So, I'm going to be bringing new electrical in from through here. So, I ran one line up through here for the lights. And then it's going to run across here for lights. And then I ran a line across the bottom for plugs all the way around the room. So that's where we're at, 176 square feet of closet. For the water lines, I don't have it completely clamped into place yet, but we added five feet of PEX. Five feet of PEX was just enough to help us get it all the way up into the ceiling area and then to round this corner without using any uh, hard 90s. I didn't want to use any 90s, so we'll just build the new walls around all this. All right, it's getting uh, pretty dark out, but I'm gonna attempt to still cut out the stucco away and get rid of this uh, gable vent to put the window in right there instead. But the, uh, looks like we got a nice sunrise going on. There's the moon. ended up, I uh, got the window in, we ended up doing an easy trim window. So what that means is I didn't have to cut out the stucco on the outside and have to fit it in and then re-stucco and it just fits on the outside of the stucco and overlaps it and glues and caulks into place with a few screws on the inside to hold it. So windows in. Finishing up another late night. I got this wall uh, mostly framed in for insulation and to get the water up inside the ceiling for in here and back inside that little cove in the corner. And uh, another sheet of drywall up with some insulation in there. So little by little, we got a little more insulation and drywall in. And I've ran the new ducting to come into here from the HVAC unit in the attic. I now have uh, boxed in the ducting on the inside of here, ran my wires and put our Lutron Cassetta switch in. Since I already have a lot of those in the house, it'll all be compatible with the automation stuff. Um, just for information, I am using all 5 8 drywall. I wanted it to help a little bit with some of the sound proofing. 
and got a little more drywall up, got the ducting boxed in, um, framed up the top of this, put in a uh, insulation, and I'm gonna go back and get some more drywall now, and then um, finish building up this wall and the ceiling. I might have this thing all insulated and drywalled in today. Other than this teeny little entryway that I still have to finish off, the drywall is all hung, and I'm gonna start taping it today. We got all the old closet stuff removed from everywhere, and drywall is all taped, and texture is happening today. All right, texture turned out fantastic. From Dave at DH Drywall, Northern California, Greater Sacramento area. And I'm gonna hit it up with some primer right now. And uh, see how that goes. We are all painted up in the baseboards I'm putting in right now. Um, I decided to remove the flooring from in here, um, even though that would have made a better transition across the step. It created a problem here, which I'll show you. But the reason I removed the floor is because I wanted this transition from the new floor to be a little bit more. So this is not the carpet, but that can represent the pad. And the carpet's going to go here, so it's going to be more at the same level as the new floor, a smoother transition. That created an inch and a quarter difference here in the height from where this beam runs. I didn't want to modify the beam at all uh, because it holds up the house. And so what I did is I cut a six inch piece of subfloor, the three quarter inch subfloor, and I put it vertically on the table saw like this. And I tilted the blade outward about 15 degrees to where the blade would go all the way through the material and create a bevel. So basically turn this piece into a giant triangle. And then that way it sat at this natural, or it sat at this slope on its own. And then I took the piece that I cut off and put it underneath the back side of this to support it. So it's completely flat, but yet it angles up that inch and a quarter. And then I just ripped it inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter piece to put in here as a filler. And I just realized you noticed I have a Ryobi tool. Uh, that is my last one. It will not die. It's a good nailer. The one in my truck that I keep with me all the time is Milwaukee, but sorry about that. I, I do have one Ryobi tool left. So I go down to cut this and uh, everything I did on this piece was wrong. I put the 45 on the wrong side. The top is on the bottom. 45 is over here. The, uh, just a bunch of crazy wrong upside down there. It's been a while since I screwed up this bad. So it turns out I did not cut it super wrong. I just brought up the wrong piece. I brought the leftovers. That's better. Baseboards are fully in and painted. Room is completely painted ready for carpet installation in the morning. And I'm just uh, punching my holes for the can lines now. Remember I pre-ran these wires. So I'm gonna pull them out there. I'm gonna add uh, three more up top here and then just run a wire down to those. Apparently the uh, weekend storms over Donner Pass have prevented the carpet trucks from deliveries. So we're going to be waiting a little bit longer for the carpet, but the padding's in. And can lights are all in. So the day has finally arrived. It's pouring down rain. And uh, the closet doctor, greater Sacramento area, they're still uh, here doing their job. It's starting to look really awesome. We are all done. So this has been a total of a four month project because I work on it here and there when I have time because nobody pays me to work on my own house. But I'm super happy with how everything has turned out. 
and I have zero complaints. Um, just time to start bringing all the clothes in, loading these things up. Thanks for watching. Like it if you like it.